Welcome to worship at Anchorage Presbyterian. This Advent, we are looking to hear words of comfort, of challenge, and of good news. The prophet Isaiah and the four gospel authors were writing in a time when people desperately needed to hear all of these as well. This first week, Isaiah the prophet and Mark, the gospel writer who published first, reassure the people that good news is on the way, yet they both say, make yourself ready. Raise your voices, change your hearts, get ready to be transformed, because now is the time. Let us embrace hope that we can do what needs to be done to bring more light into the world. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of untiring hope. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when our view is obscured by clouds of doubt, ignite the flame of hope within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us face this bleak night of the soul and embrace it as a womb of rebirth. Amen. You are now invited to light your Advent One candle of hope at this time.
In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps even our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it is an important act to call out, name, and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out, name, and claim our belief in the hope for tomorrow. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let us pray. God with us, even in Advent we confess that you seem far away. You are hidden when we need you near. In our hurt, doubt, and fear, we do not try to draw closer to you. Instead, we lash out against you, our neighbor, even those we love. Forgive us, we pray, and come to save us. Let your face shine until our tears are dried, our sins faded, and our hope is restored. After all, we belong to you, and in your hands we can be made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ was raised for us. Christ reigns in power for us, and Christ prays for us. Sisters and brothers, with one such as Christ as our advocate, we can boldly declare the good news. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves has fulfilled the law. The commandments are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Let us now share signs of peace with one another. We invite you to share the peace of Christ in our YouTube chat or by texting or emailing a friend. May the peace of Christ be with you. Hi, boys and girls. This week, we are going to learn to sing a verse of a song that, that you already know, I'm sure, because we've sung it in church before. But we're going to learn to sing it in a language that you may not know. And that language is sign language. Sign language is used by over a million people throughout the world. And it's used by people who maybe are unable to communicate with hearing or with people who communicate with people who, um, who do not hear. And people use sign language when they sing songs as well, and that's what we're going to learn today. And the song that we're going to sing is called This Little Light of Mine. And it just so happens that this, this song is 100 years old this year. It was especially popular and made popular in the 1960s when I was a little girl during the Civil Rights Movement. This was a time that pe some people wanted to dim the light of African Americans by not letting them vote in elections. So as we all learn more about the importance of music in making the world a better place, we are going to highlight this song. There are four verses, and each week we're going to learn the sign language for a different verse. So for this week, we're going to start at the beginning, obviously, and we're going to say this little for little, and then for light, we're going to use the sign for candle. Light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And shine can be one hand, but since we're going all the way around the world, let's just do both hands, okay? And then it repeats. It's a good thing because we can repeat and practice, right? This little light of mine, possession, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And then you just repeat that. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let's sing it. I'm going to sing it. You sing with me at your house. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. 
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Great. Thank you for singing and signing. I feel more hopeful already. When we add more music and light to the world, we increase the hope of everyone around us. To increase hope is to increase our excitement about the future. And we add light to what comes tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Thank you, God, for giving us light and for giving us music. Help our hands dance and our hearts sing to spread more hope in the world. Amen. Have a great week. The Gospel according to Mark is the first of the Gospels written and the shortest. Unlike Luke and Matthew, Mark makes no mention of the birth of Jesus. The Gospel begins abruptly and goes from one incident to another in rapid succession. So listen for with the way Mark begins his gospel. But before we read, let us pray. Gracious God, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and wills to do your will. In Christ the Lord, amen. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came down from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our worship series this Advent calls on the power of sung poetry that inspires those who hear it to a brighter tomorrow. 
It has been a difficult time in the pandemic for singing to be restricted. In its absence, we have been reminded just how important it is to sing together. Indeed, music has often been the soundtrack of hope. So your choir and I have been hard at work to prepare a season of music appreciation for you, as well as reflection on the power of music. Someday we will once again be able to join our voices in song in our sanctuary. But for now, rather than turn away from music and sorrow, we will turn toward the story of music and deepen our appreciation of its role in healing, change, and reconciliation. This week, Tara, Haley, and Diane Baldwin, the pastor of Beulah Presbyterian, will be hosting discussions of the powerful documentary film, Defiant Requiem, in which Jewish prisoners turned to music as a way of surviving their despair and also naming the evil perpetrated against them. Please check your email for the Zoom link. This morning, we present to you the theme anthem of our worship series that features the poetry of an anonymous Jewish person during the Holocaust. These words were found scrawled on a wall and have now been shared with the world, reminding us of the resilience of hope. May we never forget what can happen when evil is allowed to go unchecked, and may we always use our music and our art, our poetry, even our simple acts of kindness as inspiration to create goodness, not evil, in the world. An exquisite piece of poetry, the 40th chapter of Isaiah is strategically placed to mark the end of an extended exile. This exile had been decreed centuries earlier by Isaiah of Jerusalem. The successor to this prophet, known as Isaiah of Babylon, or Second Isaiah, brings an unexpected word of hope and promise. 
Parts of this poem are quoted in all four Gospels, legitimating the messenger, who despite his rugged appearance and unusual dietary preferences, is heeded as he cries in the wilderness about preparing the way of the Lord. Listen now to the timeless words of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and a rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I say, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Around this time of year, the idea of home, especially coming home, is a compelling one especially this year when some are not able to safely come home and some feel confined to their homes. We work even harder to prepare our homes for Christmas, putting up decorations, trying to get the lights and ornaments on the tree just right to recreate the magic and wonder that this time of the year can bring. What is it about home? Home is a place where you raise your children, Home is a sanctuary to retreat to after a stressful day at the office. Home is where you belong. Home is where bread is broken and meals are shared. The well-known song, I'll Be Home for Christmas, was written in 1943 when many young men were far away fighting a war. Christmas Eve Find me where the love lies. I'll be home. years before the birth of Jesus, the children of God were dreaming about home. The Babylonians had invaded Judah and Jerusalem and had destroyed the temple, the institutional structure around which their whole belief system was built. Some citizens were exported to Babylon, where they were made to assimilate into an unfamiliar culture. It is into this setting that a letter arrives, written by the poet-prophet who had somehow remained back in Jerusalem. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. Their choices, their own ways of life may have gotten them there, but a merciful God delivers them from their sins. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. 
that mourns in lonely exile here. We can all think of times in our lives when we've been in exile, alienated from those we love, from our own selves, and from God. We remain in a land of regret and shame and fear and hopelessness. Sometimes it's the roads we choose that bring us to the valley, and sometimes we have little choice. But Isaiah brings good news to those who sit in darkness, as the hymn goes, mourning neath their sorrow's load. Speak unto Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them. God says, tell them that their sins I cover, and their warfare now is over. It's an unexpected and unearned compassion for a grieving, futureless people. Then Isaiah of Babylon paints a picture of preparing the highway for our God, where the valleys rise in meeting and the hills bow down in greeting. As preacher John Buchanan imagines, over that highway, a procession will move. Banners and trumpets will announce the coming of the king returning to Jerusalem. Get you to a high mountain, the herald commands. Lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. This king is not the king they are expecting, a violent brute riding across a well-kept thoroughfare on a war horse, ready to conquer the enemy. God comes in might, Isaiah says, but he also will feed his flock like a shepherd and scoop up the lambs into his arms and carry them as he gently leads the mother sheep. Survivors of the Babylonian invasion knew how fragile life was. They had no doubt felt like blades of grass waiting to be crushed by the warriors. In contrast, the divine word is steady, reliable, and true. God's word lasts forever. Imagine the scene when this letter arrives to those living in exile. We are going home. The God of comfort and consolation who speaks tenderly who is our loving shepherd, will gently lead us there. What hope, what joy. This Advent, even though we mourn the fact that we aren't going to be able to sing together in one place, we're going to be focused on the power of singing, the power of music throughout history. Music is especially powerful in the midst of fear and distress. Under the most brutal of circumstances, there is a story about courage of a young Czech conductor who gathered a group of fellow prisoners to sing in a concentration camp during World War II. While fellow prisoners were being sent to gas chambers of Auschwitz every day, and prisoners were being punished for not working hard enough while their stomachs growled from being starved of food, this conductor recruited 150 fellow prisoners and taught them Verdi's Requiem. Let us now watch the trailer to this film. I went downstairs and there was a man sitting and she just said, I want to know, do all of you like to sing? If people are robbed of freedom, they want to be creative, and they were. Where this music is powerful, it represents a threat. And it was a tremendous challenge to have the Germans right there in front of us and tell them to their face. <laughs> It was something which made us strong. It has given us a resistance against our fate. Doing a performance was not entertainment. 
It was a fight for life. This world is Requiem. Put all of us into another world. This was not the world with the Nazis. This was our world. These were hours of pure joy, as much as you can call joy in, in camp. Here they were, surrounded by man's worst, and these Jewish prisoners were determined to remind everyone of man's best. And I brought the Verdi here because I want to assure these people that we've heard them. I don't think the soul has to be nourished by anything but by heavenly music. The, the soul doesn't need anything else. We invite everyone to watch the whole film, which you can rent on Amazon using the links on our website, and to join us for our discussion of this film this Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Holocaust and other examples of extreme hatred of another seem to all stem from fear, a fear of annihilation, of being wiped out by those more powerful, more powerful or accomplished. Could fear be the root of why we have such hatred and division amongst ourselves? Yet we are told over and over again in the scriptures, do not fear. God is with us in the wilderness. God will comfort God's people. The one who is coming tenderly gathers up those who find themselves in exile, those who are ill and dying due to disease, starvation, and warfare, the poor and those without a home, the downtrodden and depressed, the lonely and homesick. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our God is preparing a way. One day all people shall see it together as the glory of the Lord is revealed. We come and worship Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, as we prepare once more this Christmas to kneel at the foot of the manger. Here is your God, the newborn King. This is the one who by the power at work within us is able to do far more than we can ask or imagine. The one who gives us comfort, strength, and hope for the final journey home. Amen. I invite you to get into a comfortable position of rest. I invite you to get as quiet and still as you can as we prepare for a time of prayer. The gentle pull of God is often lost amidst the rush of all the obligations which lay a claim on us. Yet just beyond the frantic pace our restless feet have trod lie deep still pools of quietness, the dwelling place of God. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, be the air I breathe. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, free me to receive. Oh, take me to that secret place where lost in wonder and in awe, the moment comes and I rejoice to be and be with God. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, be the air I breathe. Meet me in the stillness, Lord, free me to receive. God of power and glory, we remember your awesome deeds across the ages, the times you saved us and brought us home. 
look upon us with your shining face, especially in times of need. We pray for those who look to you for healing and hope, those who are sick or recuperating from illness and injury, those who are lonely and need companionship and care, those for whom the holidays bring sorrow or pain, those whose deep sadness overshadows joy. Let your face shine upon us, O God. We pray for people in need of restoration and reconciliation, for those battling addictions and those in recovery, for people estranged from those they love, for someone lost in grief, for someone far from home. Let your face shine upon us, O God, that we might be saved. Renew the spirit of a world grown weary with waiting and hoping. Especially we pray for wars to end, for hunger and poverty to be crowded out by abundance. We pray too for the church, because we grow weary in our waiting and watching. Grant us clarity, passion, and true fellowship that we are awake to your presence. Let your face shine upon the church and all this weary world, we pray. In the name of the one born in a manger and coming again on clouds of glory. Amen. We would like to pause and invite you to support the mission of this church by giving financially. If you've already given online or sent in a check, we very much appreciate your generosity. If you haven't given yet, but would like to, you could give through our website, www.anchoragepresbyterian.org. Let us now present the gifts of our life and labor to the Lord. Today's anthem, I Look From Afar, is a newly composed piece by Louisville composer Laura Lee Duckworth. It is a gift from David Brink in memory of Dr. Paul Brink, who died earlier this year. The text was chosen specifically for this anthem and is based on the Matin Responsory, a traditional text for Advent calling for God to come. Laura Lee also chose to include the Advent Chorale, Savior of the Nations Come. This chorale is one of the few Advent melodies contained in the set of Bach harmonizations that Dr. Brink requested be part of his memorial service. A fitting tribute to a faithful servant. And now here, the premier performance of the anthem, I Look From Afar.
Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote this poem at Harvard on Christmas Day in 1863 during the heart of the Civil War. His wife had died tragically in a fire, and he had just found out that his son had been injured as a soldier for the Union. He heard the sound of bells and began to write, spurred on by his sorrow at the state of humankind. He writes, and in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And yet hope wins out as he pins the fourth verse. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that the sun will still shine even on cloudy days. Fill the night left by sadness with messages of hope. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep your hope alive and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Amen. <laughs>